Hey everyone, it's Movie Lover 120 here, and I'm here with an actual flashback movie review. And it's gonna be for Crank. Well, the first one. Yeah. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, I flat out love Crank. It's definitely one of my favorite action movies of all time. In fact, although despite that, I should consider High Voltage to be one of my personal favorite sequels. That's way better than the first one, and a very underrated sequel as well, but I like the first one too. I think they're both good. They're they are directed by by underrated directors Neville Dean and Taylor, who do make some very campy stuff. But but they're actually care directors that seem like they really enjoy what they're doing. I mean, yeah, Gamer's terrible, but I have fun watching it when I'm not taking it seriously. And I think of all the films Jason Stotham has done, this this and the second one are easily his two best ones, in my opinion. I mean, yes, guys, I haven't seen the Transporter films, but, so I can't really say much about those films, but, but yeah. So anyway, what is this movie about? Well, it's about a hitman, it's about a hitman named Chev Chilios, who has w woken up to find himself poisoned with some, with some kind of Chinese drug. Drug by his rival. Now... Now he'll only have one hour to live to be able to get his revenge. Get his revenge on the guy who poisoned him. Poison him and say goodbye to his girl and go out with a little style. But the question is, will he stay alive, alive long enough to see it happen? Now, of course, well, when this movie came out, it obviously wasn't really... It, was, it obviously wasn't really too loved by critics. I mean, it got like a 61%, but not too many people speak much of the film, but... In our, around like several several years later, it seems to have grown a significant call following, specifically among filmmakers like Simon Pegg, Edgar Wright, James McAvoy, and and several other several other actors and directors have actually considered Crank their favorite Jason Statham movie. I mean, it really shows here. I mean, yeah, I mean the action sequences are stupid at times, but. The movie actually knows it's stupid, and it's trying to be stupid. It's not trying to be some Oscar winner or anything. It's just meant to be some little entertaining, low-budgeted, independent action popcorn flick. And it really shows here, too. Plus, there are still some very fun, and some very funny kills, too, and there's even... Kills here, too, and... Kills here, too, and a very epic... Action sequences, they actually feel like you're playing a video game. Video game, in fact, actually, it was inspired from the video game. Yeah, it was inspired by Grand Theft Auto. In a way, some people have even, some people have even gone to call this the closest thing we'll get to a movie adaptation of Grand Theft Auto. Because, one, it's got the same amount of sex, full stuff, it's got the same amount of gore, got the same amount of swearing, and got the same amount of drug use as you would expect in a Grand Theft Auto game. If there are some well bad qualities, well, yeah, maybe like maybe some side characters like the girlfriend he has don't really contribute much to the film. I mean, she's just kind of just there for the whole for like just I think three scenes, and then she doesn't really appear much after that. But I mean, I mean, yeah, of course, there is still genuine plot in the film. Mm -hmm in the film and for very good directing and editing. I mean for flashy camera work and crazy fast cutting. But the director, writer, and editor actually went beyond the call of duty. The film was shot as though the cameraman himself was the one who was was actually the one who was poisoned, since the camera's flashing and moving around nearly constantly, only setting during the slow settling during the slow scenes when Chap isn't trying to do crazy stuff to survive. It's quite a genius use of camera work to emulate the story, and actually think makes the viewer think that they were the one poisoned. I mean, we get cutting when it's necessary and when not necessary. The film illustrates the needs of the main character. I mean, yeah. Most of the time, the whole movie is kind of just like one long action sequence with posture story elements. Sometimes in most movies it doesn't really work so well, but but with the premise of a film like Crank being a need for speed, the idea of all action and little plot actually works, and it really works well. I mean, 
you're not really supposed to get much of a story in this film, like I've mentioned. It's just meant to be this entertaining little action movie flick. Think of it like as, um, what if the bus from Speed were a guy? <laughs> yeah, in kind of a way. But all in all, this is my review of Crank. I think it's a very epic movie to watch. It's definitely one of my favorite action movies of all time, in my opinion anyways, but here is how I would rank Crank. I am going to give Crank an 8.5 out of 10. And that's it for my flashback movie review series, guys. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Before I end this video, I'll end. Yeah. I am going to be doing some flashback movie reviews because my Halloween horror movie review series was actually very successful and actually got me so many subscribers this past month. So I'm going to keep reviewing some older films. But, yeah. And, yes, guys, I will be reviewing Crank 2 High Voltage because I really love that sequel. So... Plus, it'd be kind of a crime if I didn't review it. If I'm going to review the first one, i got to review the sequel, too. So, yeah. But anyway, Dar's review was a little short, guys, but this was kind of my first flashback movie review. But anyway, guys, that'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching. And if you liked this and want to see more, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Movie Lover 120.